Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Welcome to the first episode. This is the no bull episode of Speaking Truth to Power. I'm Gary Sachs, a Brattleboro resident, and the reason this show exists is because uh, there's a program on BCTV. I began watching it, and I noticed that there was some, how would I say, I'll use the words of our Attorney General, who in 2010 determined that Entergy had miscommunicated and misrepresented, repeatedly uh, misspoken. And that is what they did and what the Attorney General called. My role is, hmm, okay, misrepresentation, misspeaking. If the Attorney General hadn't determined that Entergy had misrepresented and misspoken, but instead had called it that they had maybe not been as forthcoming as they should have been, then wouldn't the state of Vermont have saved a whole slew of money? Think of all those lawsuits, Entergy suing the state for all those times between 2012 and 2014. All that money could have been saved and could be up in Montpelier right now. Instead, we were dealing with those uh, <coughs> lawsuits until 2014 when they shut, when they announced closure on August 27th of 2013. So then I started watching the show. And having watched the show, it didn't take long before something got my goat. And that which got my goat Here we go. It is only in the eyes of the NRC and the new waste confidence decision that allows Mr. Cohn to misspeak to the Brattleboro, Greenfield, and Brattleboro and Greenfield local public by calling the interim spent fuel storage installation, quote, long term. That's not okay. For years, it was known as interim spent fuel storage installation and now somehow Entergy's pulling a fast one on us, or maybe it's the NRC pulling a fast one on us, we can't be sure. After all, I only watch them every day. Calling it independent spent fuel storage installation. Now, what's the difference? Interim implies an interim period. It's between this period and the next period. Independent implies independent. It is not dependent on anything else. So here we are. What is Entergy building? The first dry cask that Entergy put, that is the 13 that are there now on the site, those were built as an interim spent fuel storage installation. How will these next 50, whatever it is, 45, how will the next 45, how will they be different? They're an independent spent fuel storage installation, not an interim spent fuel storage installation. And I sure would like our state representatives and our energy representatives to explain that to us, because we deserve that. We're Vermonters. Okay, so I changed exactly what I was writing, but that's the nature of being here on TV. I'm not used to being in the studio. As you know, it's my first show. Uh, I wanted to say a big thank you to Derek Jordan, who produced our theme music for us, as well as the other individuals with him on that. Um, he's also gonna be doing the music during our commercials, which we'll be having for you. Um, we may not be having the uh, Nuclear Energy Institute here um, offering us commercials. I know they've been generous enough to offer Entergy uh, commercial time on Entergy's TV show. But also, if Entergy would like, they're welcome to come in and be here on my show. Uh, I will have guests in subsequent issues um, as we go along to other uh, episodes. So I have another question. Here's the thing about that interim spent fuel storage and the independent spent fuel storage. It was just about a year ago, this being September of 2015, when the NRC replaced what was formerly known as the waste confidence rule with the new continued storage of spent nuclear fuel rule. From fuel pools and interim storage facilities on site at reactors around the country, I believe there are about 65 loca commercial locations around the country. Sometime in the past four years, the NRC changed interim into independent. 
the only way to see these interim dry casks, the huge things that are holding the waste, uh, which is where the waste is going to be put after the fuel pool, the only way to see those, to replace those, is 30 years down the road and maybe to put them in a, in a situation like Russian dolls, uh, where you have to take the pack that is when it gets too hot, too radioactive, they have to put another casing around it to keep that less radioactive. Uh, I noticed that Entergy did a very good job of saying all of the waste of Entergy's 42 years of producing power can be stored in something the size of a, of a spent fuel pool smaller than a football field. Well, yes, that's true. The question to me comes up, how many football fields away from that football field must the public be due to the heat, due to the radiation coming off of it? Uh, it's not just heat in terms of thermal heat, it is heat in terms of radiation coming off of the dry casks. Uh, if you were to stand next to one for any period of time, it's, uh, oh wait, according to what's going on recently, why am I here? Because there's a big push right now by the nuclear industry to change how radiation is measured. For the past 45 years, this country has measured radiation using the linear no threshold model, which is that according to the National Academy of Science, biological effects of ionizing radiation report number seven came out in, I believe, 2006, stated there is no amount of radiation so small that it cannot lead to a formation of cancer in a solid organ. That means the slightest bit of radiation leads to cancer. Now, the nuclear industry is coming out now saying, oh no, hormesis should be the way we, should be the way that we monitor. Hormesis means a little bit of radiation is good for you. Let's get radiated today. It'll, you'll make you stronger. I don't agree. Um, okay. Um, I remember during the time between 2000, roughly 2010 and 2014, remember all those VY for VT bumper stickers? I sure would like someone to give me some clarity. How can a company that, is, that sued Vermont over and over and over again, sued it to prove that the federal Trump's state law sued it whenever it didn't like how the state's uh, public service board, regulatory board was relating to it, how does Entergy, or how does anyone believe and keep on their car, VY for VT, as though Vermont Yankee was the best thing for Vermont, the 600 jobs in Wyndham County were all that mattered, and providing power from that uh, atomic reactor splitting atoms to generate electricity, while creating a waste no one knows what to do with. It, it doesn't make any sense to me, and I, I know it has nothing to do with me that they don't exist anymore, nothing to do with any of the activists in town, nothing to do with the people protesting once a month down there, nothing to do with the litigation at the Public Service Board over all those years. Thank you, New England Coalition. They deserve your support. Um, it has nothing to do with all of the activism against nuclear power in Vermont. It has to do with Entergy's financial decision that they made the weekend before they decided to close. You guys believe that, right? I don't. It makes no sense to me. This is what Entergy said on August 27, 2013, that their board of directors had met that weekend and decided to close it. Um, it's now September 2015. In three months, you'll be hearing that same board of directors say, Pilgrim will be closing at the end of this year, as will Fitzpatrick. Um, two other nuclear reactors, one in Oswego, New York, and one in Plymouth, Massachusetts. We are coming to the end. Vermont Yankee has been a great help in, um, by toppling Vermont Yankee, by Entergy choosing to close Vermont Yankee, what's happening now is the rest of the dominoes are crumbling. It, nuclear power, is too expensive a form of power to continue. There is no reason to spend 12 to 19 billion dollars to create a reactor that will provide 
power from a centralized source at far too much money compared to other power sources today. Okay. Hello? Um, greetings, welcome back. Uh, speaking truth to power, this is the No Bull edition, the first edition of our show. Again, great thanks to Derek Jordan for his music. Uh, my name is Gary Sachs. I'm a resident of Brattleboro. And um, my intention now is to speak a bit about uh, the Attorney General Office's investigation of Entergy in 2010. And that was the result of uh, a, the mis they found that Entergy had misspoken and misrepresented. Um, the Attorney General Office investigation readily leads to the conclusion that Envy, Entergy Nuclear Vermont Yankee, and various of its personnel repeatedly misled state officials with direct misstatements and repeatedly failed to clarify misperceptions as to the existence of underground piping carrying radioactivity. These actions and inactions were at best negligent. Uh, I was there, I was in the hearing rooms, I heard them multiple times state that uh, they had used to have one pipe underground which had been capped, quote, we consider this issue closed, is how numerous Entergy personnel spoke about the underground piping that they said didn't exist in 2009, and it wasn't until October of 2009 when Entergy first found in a test well that, in fact, tritium was found, and that is a radioactive substance. Uh, there's also cobalt-60, there's also uh, strontium-90, uh, a few others they found leaking from the construction office building uh, the well beneath the uh, construction office building on the site there. Uh, that's, I believe, quite close to where Entergy wants to put uh, the second pad. Okay. <clears throat> In one of his first shows, Mr. Cohn of Entergy uh, spoke with Mr. Lynch, the external affairs manager for Entergy. And, uh, it's interesting to me to hear Mr. Lynch speak because Entergy is coming from the perspective that it is the federal government that is wrong. It is the federal government who has done wrong because in 1982, yes, three years after I bought these shoes, 1982, okay, 1982, the federal government under Ronald Reagan announced that starting in 1998, the federal government would take, nope, that's not the evacuation plan, siren, that's a horn beeping. Um, can you guys pick that up on the monitor? Okay, it's good. Um, so he's blaming, Mr. Lynch is blaming the federal government for not taking the waste from the, um, Energy Policy Act of 1982, which stated that in 1998, the federal government would remove the high-level radioactive waste from every, each and every nuclear reactor in the country and bring it to a, uh, a repository someplace. Allegedly, it could have been Yucca Mountain, but there are three deep geologic repositories in the country. Each one of them is wet. Each one of them has had water found in them. Uh, this is news. This has all been found. This is all, everything I share comes from the news. Um, but I'll keep going onward with uh, maybe the next show that Mr. Cohn did. He keeps doing these shows. They're half-hour shows. Aren't they funny? They come in, they lock the door. I, of course, invite them in. If Entergy, if you want to come in and speak to me on my show, I'd be happy to speak with you. Uh, we could replace, uh, maybe I'll be even having Mr. Cohn in here in a future visit to speak with me directly. Uh, one thing I noticed in the second episode is that uh, he does keep the, the person in my position, the anchor of the Entergy program, uh, he keeps using the term plant for the nuclear reactor that shut down here in Vernon. And I've noticed he's a communications specialist. 
I've always thought that plants were green, growed from the, grow from the ground. You have to water them. Sometimes they're weeds. Sometimes they're beautiful flowers. I don't know of any plant that splits nuclear power, though. So for him to call it a plant consistently, uh, I find disturbing and I find a um, dis... I find it disingenuous of the industry. That's my own personal thing. Um, in the second episode, which Entergy did on their television show here in Brattleboro, um, Entergy chose to use an ad by the Nuclear Energy Institute. This one ticked me off a bit too, because here you had a southern woman using both the words plant and plan. Now, I don't mean to be criticizing the southern dialect. She was describing EPZs, emergency protective zones, and she stated that the facility supports the facility. What she was talking about just didn't make sense. Sound science to protect those communities closest to the facilities. Guys, men, women, women, men, people with education, uh, sound science to protect the communities closest to the facilities. Wow, that's impressive. I'm deeply touched by that skillful language. Because these plans are very structured, that's a quote, we have had very good integrated training programs and evaluated exercises to know what action they are going to take based on the cl classification level. Uh, these plants have been matured over decades. Hello, these plants have been matured. They haven't matured, they have been matured by the workers who run them. I'm more and more scared as we go. Takes care of page two. Well, I don't know what to tell you about emergency protective zones here. Uh, my understanding is that New Hampshire just received a bunch of money from Entergy. Massachusetts just received a bunch of money from Entergy. Um, New Hampshire, of course, houses Seabrook, the reactor over in uh, Seabrook, New Hampshire, and Plymouth, Pilgrim. Massachusetts houses the Pilgrim reactor in Plymouth. We don't own another nuclear reactor, so is it for that reason that we don't get uh, federal funding to assist with our evacuation planning? Um, I am one who supports that the evacuation plan should continue until the high-level waste has been moved, uh, preferably during a summer when the school is not in, in session, moving the high-level waste from the spent fuel pool into the dry casks. Um, Oh, thank goodness, Marty Cohn, let us know. Yes, there are going to be calendars next year because that's the biggest thing Entergy's done for us is given us calendars once a year. Um, I heard Mr. Cohn speak about the hostile action exercises that Entergy has, uh, that the workers at Entergy during operation and during uh, this decommissioning process where the workers have been able to, um, I guess they call it the force on force drill. Uh, this is the drill that Entergy failed in 2001, which warranted Entergy, Vermont Yankee, being on the, uh, again, very close to the bottom of the NRC classification system. Um, the force on force drill, um, now, how the force-on-force force drill and how the EPZ drills happen, I've been told. Everyone is notified two days in advance. Everyone is notified two days in advance. Bus drivers notified two days in advance. What kind of emergency drill is that? There's my question. Smaller. Got it? Make it bigger. Well, I got a phone call. Ah, oh, good afternoon. How can I help you? Hello. Hello, you're on the air. Happy anniversary. Yes, and to you too. I am walking towards you. 
Okay. I have no idea. I've just finished my second commercial. Uh, okay. So then I will see you in the library. Oh. Okay. And you can let me know when you're done. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye. Here's what was said about the uh, hostile action scenario as the Entergy employees praised themselves. Uh, they worked as one large team. They pre-notified. They all worked together to test. They planned. They, sh they worked on their plans and procedures. It was a normal part of emergency planning. They have quarterly meetings, and they'll critique it in a week. Um, Mr. Cohn said, is emergency planning a full-time job at VY? Well, of course it is. OK, the third episode that Entergy had on their show was uh, Mr. Ken, I'm sorry, uh, Ken Swarner. Uh, and he told stories regarding the cask drop incident. Uh, he did some clarifying information that the, uh, when the dry cask, when they were first filling the dry cask here at Vermont Yankee, when they first began to fill the casks back in, I believe it's 2008, um, the first cask they filled, the crane malfunctioned. And my understanding is that it, the brake didn't work, but it held. The, the brake didn't function correctly, but it caught the load four inches above the refueling deck. And then they lowered it slowly to the refueling deck. Now, I've often been intrigued by what kind of a boom did they hear when that thing hit the ground? Because that's up on a, I would have liked to have heard that sound. I don't think it was a tender little clink. Um, it weighed about a 200 tons and it hit the ground on the refueling deck. Who knows if the refueling deck can even hold that much weight. Uh, it did, unlike the stator in Arkansas, one which fell and killed someone on Easter uh, two years ago. Rest in peace. Entergy, those are the other two Entergy, uh, Arkansas 1 and Arkansas 2, aside from the Plymouth Pilgrim reactor, are the three Entergy reactors currently on the, the white category of the NRC color coded. That means that if any more mess ups and it's close to being shut down, uh, the NRC does not have a history of shutting down reactors. Uh, I think they did shut San Onofre though. Um, maybe I'm wrong. If somebody wants to call me and clarify that, I welcome that. Um, let's go to the third episode. Mr. Ken Swarner, stories about the cast drop on the refueling floor. He claims that putting the waste in the pool with the borated water circulating around it is less efficient than having it in the dry casks. Um, I believe the dry casks are a way to permit Entergy to leave the scene for 50 years before they clean it up. Um, if I had my druthers, I would like to see Entergy clean up the waste just like they did at uh, Maine Yankee, just like they did at uh, Yankee Row, Connecticut Yankee, and get out of here. They could be out of here and gone by 2025, and I don't know if they have the uh, wherewithal to do that. I don't know why they want to continue their relationship with Vermont. Okay, so the Entergy. How did you choose Holtec? Who cares? Um, they were the winner in bidding for the offer, licensed by the NRC. It was used, tested, and approved. Uh-huh. So how did we end up with five of the eight, five of our 13 casks that were not helium leak rate tested? That doesn't make sense. They didn't do their job. They weren't tested. Um, Now, what's interesting to me, in the middle of this third show, fascinating to me, in fact, is there's another ad. And this ad is from the NEI. And in this ad, it says, 
Dry cast storage is only an interim storage approach, not a final resting place for high-level nuclear waste. I'm going to repeat that because it touches back to page one. Okay? High level, there we are. Page one, page four. Dry cast storage is only an interim storage approach, not a final resting place for high-level nuclear waste. It is only in the eyes of the NRC and the new waste confidence decision that allows Mr. Cohn of Entergy to misspeak to the Brattleboro, Greenfield, and local public by calling the interim spent fuel storage installation, quote, long-term, end quote. Entergy is doing another fast one on the name ISFACY, changing interim spent fuel storage installation, changing that to independent spent fuel storage installation. So, take that, where Mr. Cohn calls it long-term storage, and let's relate that to the NEI, Nuclear Energy Indus Institute, the uh, front group, spokes, spokes group for the industry. Dry cask storage is only an interim storage approach, not a final resting place for high-level nuclear waste. I do wish somebody would clarify that for me. Well, I believe the NEI believes that interim spent fuel storage is interim spent fuel storage. Uh, I believe the Entergy would have us believe it's long-term storage. Hmm. So, Entergy went further to say that they have the point, the half an inch thick, and one inch outer layer, um, 27 inches of concrete around it. How would you transport this multi-purpose canister? Uh, according to Holtec, this canister is not supposed to be used for transfer. So that means that Entergy would have to be moving this waste, or the federal government on Entergy's nickel would be moving this waste from the dry cast storage that they're currently putting the waste in, then transfer it underwater into a different cask, which can be used for travel. Um, then it needs to be stored horizontally for transport. There are 2,996 assemblies left to load. Uh, those are each about 7 inches by 7 inches by 12 feet. Entergy in one of their shows called them seven inches by seven inches. They forgot to mention they're 12 feet long and highly radioactive. Um, I wonder how Entergy intends to care for them in 20 years, in 30 years, or in 100 years, or is it that they expect, as I understand it, Uh, the federal government to come in and pick them up. Yep, we'll wait back for the federal government. So here's my big question. One big question. What occurs here is Entergy getting off the hook by playing nice. TV show misspeak, misinformation campaign, no more lawsuits. Then they stick Vermont with a lousy choice of cask maintenance or replacement when it should be on Entergy's nickel. Uh, it should be on the reactors that create the waste, not the state that house the waste to replace the casks uh, for transport in 30, 50, or 100 years. Uh, I sure hope that can happen again. Entergy should be the outfit. Regardless of the agreement made with the state after the closure of the reactor, Entergy should be the outfit that affords the shifting of the waste from these casks, which are storage casks only, to the transfer casks when the Department of Energy comes to take the waste away. Um, well, I only got this far. First day, this far, no one to interview, no one to make fun of even. Well, I appreciate uh, your having watched the show. You are watching uh, Speaking Truth to Power. I am Gary Sachs. I live here in Brattleboro, Vermont. I'm happy to be your host here. My intention is to speak truth to power in all its forms. Uh, today happened to be about nuclear power. The next issue will be about putting the seat down. Talk to you later. Have fun. Thank you.